I am going to hijack a major event's Wi-Fi with just a few commands on my computer. I just need my laptop and basically this USB Wi-Fi adapter that I picked up from Amazon. I know that at these events there'll be hundreds of people and typically that means slow internet. So naturally some people will want to connect to a nice fast free Wi-Fi and that's where I come in. So I got my hacker hoodie on, I'll report back. As predicted, hundreds of people, internet's unusable, this is where I come in. I'm going to try using three different types of Wi-Fi, see which is more attractive, and let's see how many people will take the bait. I created VIP and speakers only, and then I set up one called Hotel Free Wi-Fi, and these kind of had a handful of people connecting to it. Then I changed the Wi-Fi name to Staff Only Wi-Fi, and that had a lot more connections. I guess people thought this was mistakenly left unsecure, so it's their lucky day. Now, I could do a whole bunch of attacks. I can do an art poisoning, a man in the middle attack. I can do an evil twin attack. Essentially what that means is that lucky you know, go to a hotel or go to an airport and they request you to put in your email or your room number, your flight number, just so you can get free internet. I'm gonna create one of those portal. Of course, I'm not gonna log anything. Of course, I'm not gonna do anything dodgy. All I'm showing is how dangerous a Wi-Fi is when you just don't know who is in charge of it or who is in the middle of that. Okay, I'm gonna interrupt this video here for one second. Usually you know I don't show you the exact step-by-step -step I take when I do these security or hacking related videos. This time I'm gonna make a slight exception, but I think it's super, super valuable for you to see just how easy it is for basically anyone to look up a couple of YouTube videos and be able to hack a Wi-Fi network. That is what makes this so friggin' dangerous. So the next bit is gonna be me firing up my virtual machine running Kali Linux, and I'm gonna show you the various applications that I'm using. Even if you're not planning on running this yourself, sit back, relax, please do not do this yourself. But this is good enough for you to get a glimpse of exactly what's going on and why you should never trust public Wi-Fi. Okay, back to your regular viewing. I'm gonna fire up my Kali Linux virtual box and I'm gonna run Airgeddon, which is basically the framework where everything will be done in. And the first thing we wanna do is actually assign a wireless network card to this particular Airgeddon session. And we just have to make sure that our monitoring mode is enabled for our wireless card. You know, without it, well, basically none of this is gonna work. Now we're gonna select the Evil Twin Attacks menu, which is number seven. And you can see there's a whole bunch of Evil Twin Attacks. We're just gonna choose the vanilla one, the Captive Portal Attack. Next up, we have to select which Wi-Fi networks we're actually going to be part of. So we let Airgate and discover all the Wi-Fi networks around us. And then we're gonna basically make a simple selection of which Wi-Fi network we're going to attack. Now I'm deliberately leaving out a bunch of steps just because I don't want anyone to go and get themselves into trouble. But essentially once you do that, you're gonna see something called successfully captured. So I've got the handshake from the devices. All that's left to do is essentially set up the website, which looks like the portal to be able to log in. And then we let this baby run. And you can see it's running a whole bunch of processes in the background. Now watch this. On my mobile phone, I'm gonna try connect to this particular new network. I'm gonna use the password 12345678 as you can see. Click on submit and guess what? There it is. Now to be absolutely clear, this is just a demo. This is not happening in the real world because of course that is illegal. I'm just showing you how much information I can capture by creating a fake little website and I can get all that information and here is successfully captured the password. That user that connected would have just surfed the web not knowing that I'm able to sniff the traffic between his or her device and the internet. And that is what makes this so dangerous. With this kind of attack, you just don't know that it's happening. Your internet connection is working so you're not suspicious of anything and nothing triggers your antivirus. The lesson is simple, don't use public Wi-Fi. Rather create your own hotspot on your phone so that your laptop can connect to it. Now you must be thinking, okay, but what happens if you use a VPN? Also, most websites seem to be secure with a little SSL key lock thing. So does this still apply? Great questions, I've got an entire video just on that which is right over here. Also check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe and I will see you in this video or in this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.